Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. Everybody, excuse me. Um, welcome to 50 Question Friday for July 2nd of 2021. And let's see. So we got 27 people on here this morning live. Appreciate. Sorry, I got the hiccups. Appreciate you all being here today. Um, again, as we do the questions here today, if we have live questions, be sure to drop them over here on the questions tab. And then the chat tab is for everybody to hang out. Uh, we have some great people here that uh, assist with questions and answers that know the tools very well as well. Um, let's see, we have Albuquerque, Australia, Texas, Hawaii, North Carolina. Well, thank you guys for all being here today. So, Montana. So again, just drop your questions in the question tabs. Um, I do have at least one from the internet that we can start off with. But actually, we'll probably start off with a quick meditation. Um, drop into the heart space. Hey, Dominican Republic. Oh my goodness, Eugene. Dominican Republic. I used to work there for a little while. I so want to go back, one of my favorite places. Maine, Colorado, Mount Baker, Washington. Hey, Sydney, Australia. Well, thank you guys for all sharing where everybody's from because it's it's great to know we have friends all over the world. Margaret, you're in Ireland. Very cool. All right. So let's go ahead and take three breaths. Close your eyes if you wish. Putting your, your attention onto your physical heart, finding your light, your soul's fire, imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth, breathing in that light of the earth up into the heart. Just a big, deep breath, connecting heart to heart with creation, breathing in that light of creation into the heart. I tell you, the breath is so important, just those deep breaths. That third deep breath, breathing in both earth and sky, imagining bringing the energy of both creation and the earth into your heart together at once. As those energies meet and mix with your soul's light, you then become a column of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. All right, so here we go. We'll start. Um, we'll start with the internet question here first. Um, the internet question had to do with the Hedica and working with the Hedica energetics and bringing the Hedica energetics. Um, you know what? Maybe I better just look at the question here on the internet just so that I get it actually answered so thank you for your patience okay so wondering if you'd be willing to lead an attunement for all the hedicas the hedica tools to be available and coherent with the purpose of balancing the energies of water in our bodies garden environment watershed region continent oceans and planet so, so yeah, John's just asking about, um, you know, doing a meditation with the Hedica. Um, so, you know, I think that's a great idea, idea, John, to, to get everybody, you know, um, into the space of connecting with the, with, this is the symbol Hedica, which Hedica is the, basically it's the name of the consciousness of water. Um, because water, it, it's water itself. It's older than our planet. Obviously it has consciousness. Um, it came here to assist the earth and humanity. Um, so Hedica, as far as working with the consciousness of water, 
you know, when you start working with it by, by yourself is a phenomenal way. You don't necessarily have to have a symbol, the Hedica symbol. Now, if you, if you don't and you'd like to have one, you can actually just print out a photo of this or you can draw it. Um, and it doesn't have to be made out of copper. It's basically with this symbol of Hedica in itself, when it's made out of copper or even when it's drawn, it is producing energies. It's producing a field. Now, um, the field isn't because of the spirals, the little vortex that comes out of here. Yes, there is a little vortex of energy that comes out of the spirals, but we see it mostly as just a field, um, a field around the Hedica. And this field is the energetics, that the energy of, of water, the consciousness of water. So this is simply kind of like some like a reiki symbol um where symbols have power and meaning you know they used to have power and meaning a lot of those have been just cleared off the board over the past years um you know the power and meaning behind symbols um but really that's kind of what we're doing is we are utilizing the symbol so it works best for you to just sit you know solo i'm John, I would like to think about this, about leading a, a group adventure into this, but just connecting with Hedica, the elemental of water, the consciousness of water, is simply being in that heart space because anything that we do that's in the energy world, we want to take that Trinity breath first so that we are in our heart, we're not influenced by other stuff, and this is where we're connected. Um, this is where we are empowered um, to create and to co-create so when we're in the heart space um you know it's great to have a vessel of water i have tea it's great to have that vessel of water with you or being at a lake or in your tub and just working with the water speaking with the water especially if you're going to ingest it or soak in it to ask for you know all the highest and best potentials for the healing, the clearing, the activation, the knowing, whatever it is that you desire. Ask for the water to help carry that and anchor that into the physical. Because water is pretty connected. Um, water can do some amazing, amazing things for us. We use the rings with the water because the rings are carrying all those different frequencies and properties of all plant, crystal, mineral kingdoms, all the rays of light, you know, all this stuff. And so when we put our water with the ring, we can then ask the water to carry, you know, the specific frequencies and properties um, that are beneficial to us. So that's why I like to use a ring as well as, you know, the Hedica to me is just a way to connect with the water. Anyway, hopefully that was okay. Yeah, John, I thought maybe we might do a meditation, but I yeah, just not... I'd like to play with that one some more. All right. So let's see. First question. Linda, please tell us about the new Alchemist set. Yeah. So the the new Alchemist set that we're releasing, it's um, basically we've created the larger practitioner size rings, which we're using this eight gauge, which in these smaller rings is a super heavy gauge. But when you get to the larger rings, it's not quite as of a heavy gauge as the four gauge rings of the practitioner sets, which are a super heavy gauge. Now the eight gauge is about half the, the diameter of wire, actually a little bit less, quite a bit less. Um, and with the eight gauge, the larger rings are a lot more affordable for one. Um, you're able to get the the trio of the alchemist set for half the price of what the practitioners rings are and the alchemist set is all of our three newest frequencies it is the divine i am which is what this one is so it's the divine i am um, that's the 26 inch ring and then that one's also the horse harmonizer ring so for the horse harmonizer ring we chose the Divine I Am ring because that is our newest ring. That contains everything basically that we've created. It's, it's built into 
and supports the divine I am. So everything that we've created at Twisted Sage basically comes in energetically supporting that divine I am ring. Um, the divine I am is simply your soul, your soul's light. So it is holding a space for your soul's light to me be more present in the physical. That's what that large divine I am ring does, that, that alchemist size of ring. But then there's the next size up, the 27 inch ring, which is the chalice ring. And that chalice ring and the divine I am ring work so well together. Um, it's it, the, the chalice ring is bringing that, that crystal clear, pure conscious light, that chalice energy into the physical. So your physical becomes the chalice, the container for that crystal clear, pure light. So when you're using those two rings together, the chalice and the divine I am, it is allowing that more that more of you of your soul's light to be within the physical and the chalice energy is one that is clearing miscreations it's um it's releasing clearing harmonizing dissolving however your soul sees fit it is releasing and clearing traumas um it's releasing and clearing programs belief structures um, just all the things that no longer serve us that we are willing to release in our highest and best good. Now, there's some things that we hold on to unconsciously that we may not know of because this is working throughout all lives of our soul in this existence, in this reality, in this universe, all soul incarnate. So this is clearing a lot of stuff. So... When you use that divine I am and that chalice together, it's allowing the soul to do that clearing work. Now, then when we bring in that third ring of the alchemist set of that trio, which is the harmonizer ring. Now, when the harmonizer ring comes in, it's, um, as you might have seen in the description, I, you know, I, I don't like to call it a bridge because it's almost like a bridge. But to me, it still really does seem like a cosmic blender, which is how I've described it on the website. Because to me, I see it as basically it's a space that allows that integration of all that higher soul light into the physical. And it's more than just the soul light. It's, 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 it, it's, it's like a blender for light and physical matter. Um, and we bring it with ourselves. It's our soul's light and our physical body. So when you add that harmonizer ring to the divine I am and to the chalice, it is allowing that fuller integration of all of that into the physical and working on the physical for more of the release. Because the harmonizer ring, um, you know, it contains the golden fire. It contains the chalice. Um, that harmonizer ring is very much that integration space of the energetic and the physical. So when you bring those three rings together, it is pretty flipping amazing um, for that set of rings for the alchemist set. Now we are actually in the process of making a alchemist set, a personal set. That's gonna be, this is this will be the smallest ring of the, of the personal set. Um, this one that I can just barely fit over my hand. Then there will be two other rings that nest um there'll be the other ring outside of here and then there'll be one more a little bit larger ring it's actually going to be this um about the diameter of one of these but it's going to be the same gauge. so they're just going to nest perfectly this set of three rings they'll be out oh probably by about mid-july but um and it's the alchemist set as well but the large alchemist set of rings, um, you know, it, it's, it's such a phenomenal set for you to keep yourself within your, you know, when you're sleeping at night, when you're sitting at your desk, whatever, to just be within that column and just allow and be in your space. And it does some really phenomenal magic with your reality in all realities. Um, 
It really does because of the clearing work that takes place through all lifetimes. Uh, Susan, I have a very intense crystalline portal in my home. It is very strong. It puts my body in overdrive. Can you suggest which of your products would help neutralize the energy? I have the harmony ring, but it doesn't really help. How can I ground the portal? Much gratitude, Susan. Okay, so Susan, really the for grounding the portals, um, one of the tools that you can use is the wings of talk. The wings of talk are phenomenal for working with portal vortexes, geopathic, geomagnetic. You can't have a portal unless you have the, the geomagnetic intersections to support that portal. Well, you can, but very rarely. So the, it's, it's the geomagnetic lines that creates that vortex, and then the portal is in place with that vortex. So the wings of talk will clear non-beneficial vortexes um, and everything, but really there's two, what I would actually rather suggest would be the golden fire and light wand and to use the wand and to anchor the column of light into that space. Now, with the product videos of either the wings of talk, which you also create a column of light with, or with that golden fire and light wand, which we have the light anchoring 3.0 video. Either of those videos you can actually use and anchor your light into that space and you, you get the attunement in the video because they are quantum tools and you don't need to actually purchase the physical tools. So if you feel like you can follow a guided meditation and be in the heart space and know that you are a powerful creator, you can do these columns of light very simply and easily. And that is what we use. That's, you know, that's what we use for portal vortexes. We don't actually take large rings and, and, and dows and find the center of the vortex and put the ring on it. You certainly can. But in reality, the consciousness work, the anchoring the columns of light is going to do the work for you. And, um, that's really what our tools are about, is empowering people to be able to do that work for their own. Sometimes the tools are a great stepping stone to get there. So yeah, Susan, I'd say looking at the Wings of Talk or the Golden Fire and Light Wand and using either the physical tool or doing it through consciousness work is, is what you're going to get to harmonize that, the energies of that portal. Uh, Tam, will you consider making Hedica and silver? Yes, you know, gosh, through the years we have made a few of them in silver, but um, I think it's a phenomenal idea because we can make them small enough where they can, you know, fit inside of, of your water bottle. And um, if we make them out of pure silver, not sterling, then you can place it directly in the water and you have the antimicrobial properties of the silver as well. So I think it would be an excellent idea to start to make the silver headicas and make them available. So, yep, Tam, um, I think we'll start doing that. So thank you for the inspiration for sure. Uh, JR, how do you use the golden fire and light dowsing rod to cure geopathic stress, negative vortexes, etc.? So the the golden fire and light the dowsing rod um basically this is also the wand so in the product videos and then there's also um a longer video of a class i did for the dowsing convention on the the dowsing rod website and basically what we do is we do the same thing as the golden fire and light wand is is that we Go through that little meditation of being in the heart, becoming that column of light. And once you are attuned to the golden fire and light rod, which is that ancient etheric tool, the, the videos will walk you through that attunement process to where your soul is the one that's holding on to that tool. You're holding on to the physical one as this physical anchor as you are. And then you also have the attunement to the sacred heart which brings through that golden fire into your column of light. So it is utilizing both of those, which the product videos will walk you through, especially the light anchoring 3.0 video on YouTube or the website that will walk you through using the dowsing rods 
to create those columns of light. And it's that column of light that you bring in that will do the work with the geopathic geomagnetic negative vortexes. So it's actually the column of light that we use when we're using the dowsing rods. The dowsing rods are simply a tool to help you find those vortexes, to help you find the, the geopathic, geomagnetic, um, the edge of the vortex, the center of the vortex, all the fun stuff. And when you find your vortex or you feel where you know it's at, it just helps with a better visualization of when you're anchoring the column of light and then being in the heart space again, after you anchor your column of light, you can use the dowsing rod to go through and try to find anything that wasn't cleared. And then you can do another column of light. But usually it'll clear it as soon as you do the exercise. All right, Renard, just received my quantum grid point and love how it feels. For connection to the ascension pyramid, do you visualize the pyramid or a column of light? So um, when you get your quantum grid point, it is already connected to every pyramid and every grid point on the planet. So the more these are spread out everywhere and the more that we make, the more grid lines, the more lines are going to be coming out of your piece. So really where these are connecting to every one of them, there are thousands, thousands of grid points and pyramids all over the planet now. And so there's thousands of these lines that intersect that come into the grid point. So it's creating such an array of light that comes out of them. So you don't actually have to, so if you are using the quantum grid point and your pyramid and you want to create your space using these different 60 degree angle pyramids, whether you have, you know, an ascension pyramid or um, any of the other structures that we create, the pyramid structures, you do just use a visualization. So let's say you have a pyramid hanging in your bedroom and you just get a couple of grid points. When you bring in the grid points, it is simply that, Renard, just a visualization and an intention while being in the heart space. And if you don't have the, the imagination visualization, you know, available to you, it's an intention. So you just intend, and it's a soft intention, you just intend when you bring in your quantum grid point, you sit it down in the house, you're just like, okay, that's connecting to my pyramid, that's connecting to the other grid point. So now I have my localized grid, my triangular shaped localized grid. And what is within the center of this triangulation, triangular pattern, what is within the center is my sacred space. And this is what I want my sacred space flavor to be. I want it to be for healing, higher connectivity, um, inspiration, more energy, uh, being in the heart, the clearing work, you know, you just you just put your laundry list of your wishes and intentions into this triangular shape pattern or however many grid points you have that create this sacred space in between each of the points. Hopefully that answered what you were looking for there. Um, and a bit more, I'm sure. Uh, Christine. My practitioner said of three rings I've had for only three weeks and sleep in them every night. And wow, they are really felt on the physical. How do you see the alchemist set working with the trio? Would you add them together? So, you know, yes, Christine, I, I do adding, adding the alchemist set and the trio together are, it's just amplifying everything so greatly because the trio, the harmonic creation field trio, um, you know, it's almost working in a little bit of a different space and place um, than what the alchemist set are. The alchemist set is much more expansive, but they're both just about as high. I mean, they're still working through all soul aspects and all soul levels and, um, and everything but the um the alchemist set 
it's just more more and more expansive and it brings in more energies to allow more dissolution of the things that no longer serve such as entire lifetimes um so you know truly if you wanted to boost what you're doing with your set of three rings your practitioner set i would suggest just getting the divine i am ring the horse harmonizer oh, same ring um, because if you get that 26 inch divine i am ring and add that to your trio it's going to be bringing everything together so instead of getting a whole set um you know christine and where you have the practitioner's rings i believe that you could just get that divine i am ring and that is going to do everything as if you had all six rings together because that that harmonic creation field trio the practitioner's rings is already holding such a high space that you add that divine i am and it's just going to you know bring it all together but yes i'm really glad that you're loving those rings because um it is such a powerful thing to be within those fields, especially while you're sleeping. Because um, you, can, you can put those rings right above your headboards because they create a column of light. So if you hang this on the wall or the headboard and you are sleeping in this column of light, it is connect, you know, it's working throughout the whole body. Your whole body is within there. And when you lay down at night, you can lay down and take the three breaths to be in the heart space, which helps you sleep so much easier because you don't have all the talk. You don't have all the commotion. So lay down, take the three breaths to be in your heart space. You can ask your soul to start, you know, whatever it is that you wish for, I mean, in your reality. Um, I would always lay down at night, go into the heart space and ask my soul for all the downloads activations attunements whatever i needed to be able to have sight and to have a higher connection um you know that's that's what i did in the beginning and um so yeah using that trio of rings is pretty pretty phenomenal um diane does the barrel of the dowsing rod or the golden fire and light wand need oiling or some type of cleaning no actually they are a sealed bearing on these um so they never need you know the oil won't penetrate the bearings um and it's hard to get dust or anything in there now i've had some wands and dowsing rods for years and i've never noted that there's been any kind of stickiness or sludge in my in any of mine now sometimes when we are putting them together we can snap a bearing and sometimes a bearing can start to go bad so if you have some stickiness or some catches um it might be a, such a thing um diane that you might need to send that back if that's causing issues you know if it's causing issues in the catching of the rod or if your wands are you know because in the wands it's not as a big deal because the spinning on the wands we you know it's we don't really need the wands to, to spin, I guess I'd say. Um, the bearings don't know why, but that's just the way they were supposed to be assembled with the bearings. But if your dowsing rods, if you start to get little catches in them or they're just not working the way they were when you got them, as far as the, the bearings go, you can send them back because we do have that lifetime guarantee on the bearings as well. But it's very rare I've never actually have it happen to myself with all the tools that I own that my bearings ever went out on me, but I can't say that that would never happen. So yes, you are welcome. If you feel that it needs attention, you're welcome to send it back to us. Um, John, I have some 16 gauge brass wire. What would be useful? Would that be useful to make some elemental tools? Yes, John, actually making um, the elementals out of brass is going to be just as potent as making it out of copper. Brass is actually mostly copper. Um, so the brass might be a little bit harder to bend depending on how it's annealed. But 
the brass is going to be beautiful and it's going to contain that energetics um, whether you're making it out of brass silver or copper or a pipe cleaner um, it is still going to bring in those energetics um, because it is just your intention whether it's a conscious intention or not you're having the intention of connecting with Hedica, the water elemental um, Diane, what set of rings are necessary for the etheric template of the Ascension Pyramid? So for the Ascension Pyramids, um, we use the Harmonic Creation Field Trio. It is the trio that we use on the Ascension Pyramids. Now we started to add the Harmonizer Ring to um, um, just on our own personal ones. And it's one that I would suggest adding to your Ascension Pyramid too, is the Harmonizer Ring. So in order now, then I'm not quite sure. So what set of rings are necessary for the theory template of the Ascension Pyramid? Now, so there's five components that go to the Ascension Pyramid to make it function. One is the 60 degree angle pyramid cut to the sacred measurements. That is just one component. So some people will get that pyramid, but it's not bringing through, it's not the Ascension Pyramid yet. We then need to add the harmonic creation field trio, the regeneration Gaia sphere, the cosmic sun disk, the Taurus, and the wings of talk. So those are the five components that are needed to create this field of the Ascension Pyramid at this time. It is still those five sets of tools. I hope that was the the answer you what you were looking for with that, Diane, because um, we have not yet created a set of tools that still is replicating the ascension pyramids. We you know we we have not been able to well we just haven't you know yeah I'm not sure I imagine someday in the future we will be able to create a small tool that or a small ring. That contains the energetics um, but for now it does still require those those five parts and pieces all right so heading back over here to chat to see what's happening over here um all right let's see and um diane what set of rings can be used and the Aesthetic in the etheric template will be preserved. There are several different sets. Oh, okay. So, Diane, I, I'm, I'm assuming that you're asking about which size of rings can be used on the Ascension Pyramid, which you can use any set of the Harmonic Creation Field Trio. It can be the, the smaller water ring size set. Um, you know, of this size, you can use these three with the pyramid. You can use the the larger home set of water rings the harmonic creation field trio for the pyramid you can use the um gateway tab that you buy for your phone because it's the set of three rings and then the larger size the eight foot pyramids the larger ascension pyramids they actually come with a another smaller practitioner set that 20 22 and 26 inch set of rings um, and you can use the full size practitioner set too. Um, you just have to tuck under the pyramid a little bit when you go in there because the rings hang so low with the practitioner set. But um, any of the trio is going to work just perfectly for bringing in that energy of the harmonic creation field trio into the pyramid for it to work. Uh, let's see. And uh, the sitting pyramid and the ascension pyramid have different sizes of Gaia sphere. Is there a difference in terms of the size or is it just aesthetic reasons? And yes, Anna, the, the Gaia sphere does not matter the size. Um, they're both regeneration Gaia with the three inch and the eight inch. And you are correct. It is just for aesthetic purposes that we put the eight inch on top of the eight foot tall pyramid. Um, but actually, when I, I have a portable eight foot tall pyramid and I just use the small Gaia sphere because it's more portable and easy for me to carry on my motorcycle, let's say, when I'm going to do something and I can set up the pyramid. 
Um, so I actually just usually use the the three inch Gaia sphere on all of my personal pyramids just because it's easier. Um, and so that's too why you can actually go to you know the pyramid page and you can actually just purchase the parts individually um, you know to bring it all together. Now this is an update that we haven't put on there but you can use the divine I am Taurus in place of the cosmic sun disk. Um, so if you go to the pyramid page and you want to buy the parts and pieces to make your own size pyramid, you know, your whatever size of the trio you wish, um, whatever size of Taurus, because you can get the two different size cosmic sun disks that will still work. But the divine I am Taurus is phenomenal in here. The only thing about using the divine I am Taurus versus the full size Taurus is, is that the full size Taurus sits in here above your cables and holds the pyramid in place. So that's the only thing that mm, we haven't created a workaround for that yet. Um, one of the ways that's possible to do it is to take your home set of rings and place those inside of where your Taurus is. And that way, this home set of rings, the largest ring is the same size as your Taurus. That way it will hold your legs extended out because we need something in here to keep your legs expanded so that they're at the right angles. So you can use the harmonic creation fill trio rings, the home set to put inside to keep your legs expanded, but then you still don't have a cradle for the torus. But again, the torus can be placed anywhere within the structure at any angle and it's going to be doing the work. So hopefully that covers what you're looking for there. Um, Christine, you were speaking about updating the golden fire coil and wondered if you had looked at it yet. Would it be good to add to my bipendant to entrain my field? Um, we've done some updates on that golden fire coil. And yes, I realize I did mention that probably about three or four weeks ago. Um, that we were going to do an update with the golden fire coils and then re-release them. And so we have not re-released them yet and we've done some updates with it, but the updates are not complete yet. Um, so all golden fire coils that are out there right now, we have done some updates with them. Um, But I'm not sure if that's where we're stopping yet. Um, I haven't sat with Brenda as well to really look at the energetics of the coil and see if we can do something completely fresh and new with that golden fire coil. Right now it does have the energetics of the divine I am and the chalice and the harmonizer is all coming through that coil right now. Um, so the coil is quite a bit different. Now, as far as um, suggesting if you use that coil along with your binary infusion pendant, um, you know, I, Brenda doesn't like the coils for some reason. I'm not sure. She's never really been able to explain it, but she just does not like the coils um, for her personally. Um, you know, she sees them as beneficial, but just she doesn't personally like them because um, she has her own thing going on with her field. But I, I like the coil a lot. Um, and most people that I know that have the coil love the coils too, because yes, it does entrain that energy field. And then when you're using it with that binary infusion pendant, to me, it feels like it does bring that more fully into the physical and help move the energies more. Um, so, you know, if you are considering the coil, I would say go for it and know that when we finally do our when we have our final update on that coil it will update the coil that you already own so um i'd say go for getting the coil um just go for it and then play with it and then after we do our updates on it maybe you can notice a shift in the difference of your coil at that time and how it works for you um let's see jr what do you suggest to neutralize electrical power boxes in the home or using the column of light with the golden light 
the cold and fire and light rod be enough? So JR, actually you can um, just anchor the column of light into the, the power boxes. Um, so actually what you could do to, okay, so I'll take this in two parts. Um, so the best way to work with the power boxes, there's two options. One option is the plug-in disc, which you can plug into any outlet in the home, and it will connect into your main electrical breaker box or your fuse panel, um, your, your main power box, your electrical breaker box. So it'll actually harmonize all the electromagnetic fields in the breaker box, in your, um, in your electrical meter, your smart meter transmissions will then be harmonized. Plus, when you use one of these, it goes all the way back to that transformer box. If you have underground electric, the transformer boxes are those big green boxes that sit out in your neighborhood on lawns. If you have overhead wires, the transformers are the big um, cylinders that sit up on the poles. So those are the transformers. So when you use one of these plug-in discs or the stick-on disc onto your electrical panel itself, doesn't matter which place you put it, the plug-in or the electrical panel, it is going to go all the way back to that transformer outside in the neighborhood, and it will work with that transformer. Now, the professional dowsers that we've worked with, they'll use on a dowsing scale that that transformer puts out a field in the negative thousands. When you use one of these, or you tape a Wi-Fi ring onto your electrical panel, or you stick a ring on your electrical panel, it is going to change that, um, that um, distribution uh, box out in your yard. It is going to change that from the negative thousands to the positive hundreds. In any household whose breaker panel, whose electrical panel is connected to that transformer, their electrical panel moves to the positive 100s as well. So you using your one little plug-in, stick-on, or tape-on ring onto your electrical system is going to affect your neighbors as well or your entire apartment building. Um, so that's one way with using the tools that you can affect all the electrical within the space. Now, the other way is, yes, you can totally anchor a column of light. And with that column of light, I would anchor that through that transformer box that either sits out on the lawn or hangs up on the electrical pole. And just anchor that column of light through there. That way you're affecting, you know, your whole local grid. Now, I actually, whenever I'm traveling around the country and I see these, um, especially near power plants, you know, whether it's wind farms or hydroelectric or whatever, um, and you see those great big fenced in areas with all of the huge lines coming in and out of them and all of the giant transformers there. Those are places that I go and anchor columns of light as well. So if you find where your electricity comes from, if you're out driving someday, go there, anchor a column of light, and that will affect the entire electrical distribution system. Um, so yeah, those are those are a couple of, of simple ways that you can neutralize the harmful effects of electromagnetics that are discoherent. Um, which are which are what all man-made electromagnetics are, is they're discoherent energy. And so the tensor tools, the columns of light all bring a coherency to that electromagnetic field, making it more beneficial and harmonious with us as we are electromagnetic beings as well. Um, all right, cool, got your question answered, Anna. Um, and back over to the chat tab. Renard, I can't wait for the personal alchemist set. I know, I know this thing and I don't have a full real set either because uh, we've been trying to find the right rings that will nest. And so this was our first trial, these three rings, but they they don't nest very well at all. So we're working on making them here this week and next week. 
And so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting this, this um, personal alchemist set out there too, because you can do distance work with these. Um, you can basically just, when you do your own work with it by standing in the column or with the personal set, you just imagine yourself standing here in this column of light while you're holding them and doing your meditation in the heart and you're allowing and it does amazing things. And then after you've done the work for yourself, you can simply, simply hold these out or send them down and imagine somebody else standing within here and just hold that space for them and their soul and all of their lights to do their own work, which happens in a no time space. So you don't have to sit here and hold the rings for like a half an hour or anything. You just hold it for like a minute for a person and the work is done. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, this alchemist set is pretty flipping exciting. I mean, it's just part of these new energies, the divine I am, the chalice, the harmonizer. It's, it's, it's all really exciting. Um, oh, and there was a, DB put a, um, a message on here about how he just takes the Wi-Fi ring, puts it in a small zip black ziplock bag and tapes it where you need. That's a great idea. That way you don't have to be putting tape on your ring and it's going to be wherever you need it. So that's a great idea, TV. Um, let's see, and John's asking, I like making some of the elemental symbols and wondering where I might get used or clean wire. You know, when we used to do our copper wire, we would go to metal reclamation facilities, places that take crushed cars and copper wire. And I would dig through their bins and find all different gauges of wire. And, you know, a lot of times you'd have to strip the plastic coating off of them, but a lot of times you find bare wire. And it is super cheap there and it is a great way to upcycle. So if you're looking for wire to make your headicas, go to a reclamation facility and ask to see their number one copper wire. It's one of their copper wire. It's just called number one copper in, in, that, in that business. Um, so you ask to see their copper wire, they'll just show it to you and sell it to you by the pound. And then that way you can go in and you can check the tensile strength, you know, see how hard it is to bend some of the wires because you know it's just easier on your hands if you get a softer more malleable um, piece of wire so anyway and yeah renard's uh mentioning how you do crystal healing sessions and use the golden fire and light wands with clients and to use the alchemist set to give it an even more push yeah that's it is that you know that alchemist set um the the rings on the alchemist set the first one fits over my hand very well the second one's a little loose and the third one is going to be quite a bit looser but you can still end up wearing them as a set but it, they're just going to be you know transportable and I'm hoping that that set's going to be around a hundred bucks for, you know, we're doing the time study on, we want all of our tools. We always want to be as affordable as possible for people because we're here to help people that are doing the work. And the more this gets out there, the more we're doing the work, the faster we're going to shift this entire planet. So that's, you know, we're trying to get these as cheap as we can to people. Um, they're still kind of a heavy duty and, and kind of tough to work with and round and everything. But I'm hoping that we can get these for around a hundred bucks for that trio set of the alchemist, the personal alchemist set. Um, let's see. Another question. DB, I'm wearing a silver finger ring on one hand and a copper on the other. The copper is not as, not as comfortable, almost heavy feeling. Is this typical? definitely plan to get another silver next time so db that that's it too um i have a tough time with my fingers because the energetics it has to be you know it has to be just spot on for me to wear any kind of finger rings um i can wear our silver rings the copper ones um i don't like as much they they do kind of um it depends on where you're at 
because for I'd say 98% of the people on this planet, maybe, well, if you're looking at people on this planet, 99% probably will do fine energetically with one of the copper rings. Um, the copper rings are some of our, you know, past frequencies um, where the silver ring is just the chalice. So thank you, DB, for bringing this up. Oh my goodness, thank you again for, for another suggestion here because um, I'd like to go through and change all of our copper rings to the divine I am. So that way the copper finger ring is the divine I am and the silver is the chalice. So I'm gonna get with Brenda here over the weekend or maybe today, and we're gonna shift all those finger rings, the one that you have, all of them that we have at the shop and all future creations so that those finger rings are containing that divine I am frequency. Because um, right now those finger, the copper finger rings are containing, you know, they're kind of like the everything ring, the chaos ring, but they're not. They're just the tools that we've created here at Twisted Sage. All the energetics are right there. So it's, it's pretty high energetics. But the divine I am template, this divine I am energy, contains everything that we've ever created at twisted sage that's it, it it you know every ring that we create builds upon everything else especially this divine i am it's built upon everything that we've created so yes um db we're going to put that divine i am into those rings and as a matter of fact let's reconnect your ring right now your copper finger ring and we're just going to shift that template of that finger ring. Well, I guess we're going to shift all finger rings that are in copper and connect those to the divine I am. Whew, awesome. And of course, I'll get with Brenda and we'll double check and see if there's anything else we need to do with it later. But um, that that might have that might have done it for you. Um, <clears throat> so thank you for bringing that up so the deal is is that for me i can't wear a lot of those rings and i can't touch you know any of the older frequencies or rings um you know anything past below the harmony you know the, the galactic the 144 the 177 all of those i just you know they're just in a different vibrational level and so that's i db that's where i feel that you're at is is that chalice silver ring is very much up there you know we're never going well maybe i can't say never but you know we're always going to be that chalice energy is still going to be bigger than what we are um is as far as our physical vibration goes but this copper ring can be at that same vibration as you or maybe not quite as high that's why i say about 99 percent of the population doesn't have that high a vibration as that ring does but when you get there then you're it's not as comfortable you know if you start to exceed that vibration so now i'm hoping with this divine i am in that copper finger ring that that is the vibration that you want to actually be at because that is the vibration of the soul. Um, good, cool, DB. I'm glad that you felt a shift in that finger ring. Awesome. I'm going to go try on a finger ring here afterwards, too. Okay, so, well, you guys and gals and peoples and humans and other beings, thank you for all being here. Unless we have any more questions, I'm going to end our session here um don't have anything huge on the plate right now for um for attunements activations stuff um we're working on mm, my sister and i just took a class um that we've been playing with the energetics of and um it's from the crimson circle there's actually the sexual sexual energy school, which really doesn't have to do anything with sexual energies. It's about it's about um, consciousness and human interaction and um, 
imbalances in the human. And it's pretty profound. It shifted my entire being um, this last week. And so we're really looking at finding some more energetic updates that we can put into these rings to help with these huge shifts of imbalances within the human, um, which just, it puts us on a whole different, it, it puts us in a whole new space. Um, let's see, Eugene, I wonder how the pyramid stage on your saw on your website's coming along. It'll be great if you come back to Dominican Republic. <laughs> yeah, so we, we did have that pyramid stage for that, the mass meditation initiative in LA here a couple weeks ago. Um, we actually have the pyramid set up over here next to our other studio. Um, we're just going to leave it set up here for a little while. And um, it's a little tourist attraction. Um, and then as far as working with the, the, the folks at Disclosure Fest, we're going to be working on creating a little bit sturdier structure uh for them to like put their banner on it and start using that as their stages when they do their all their disclosure fests so i know they're planning on doing some more of those thirty thousand person events and um they want to have one of those giant pyramids for when they're doing those giant events so mm -hmm. that's going to be pretty fantastic that's you know that's really an honor to be able to create that giant pyramid to where it can affect that many people at once, especially if you are up there presenting, broadcasting, doing sound, doing gongs, whatever, um, you know, playing music, that it just all gets, um, you know, that, that pyramid just acts as a carrier wave and amplifies everything, takes that energy out. So let's see. Um, well, awesome. I guess, um, so as far as meditations go, um, I really don't have anything new for us to do here today, but I'm hoping that here in the future, we're gonna start bringing through some more new fun stuff once we get a handle on it. And then of course, um, doing a full day workshop, I wanna put in a quick plug for a workshop that I'm doing, it's on Eventbrite, it's also on our upcoming events page, it's in Clinton, Iowa. And I know Clinton, Iowa is kind of in the middle of flipping nowhere for most people, but you know, there's near the Mississippi um, River. It's, uh, where's the Missouri? I think it's Mississippi. Um, somewhat close to Chicago. It's near like Dubuque and Davenport and some other small towns that none of us probably know of, but it still is going to be a phenomenal phenomenal full day event and even though it is in the middle of nowhere and probably out of your way if you have the time energy and abundance to do so i would just suggest coming and checking it out where you're going to do some pretty phenomenal things in that full day workshop so anyway that is the first week of august it's just a one day workshop and I had to put a plug out there for all that because we've extended our early bird sale on those um, because we really want to get those seats filled because, um, yeah, the more of us that are doing that work, boy, the faster we all shift. So, all right, I'm going to let you guys go. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me here. And, um, yeah, I look forward to our next connection here, probably next week, I'm imagining. So um, everybody take care. Have a phenomenal weekend. Um, happy here in the U.S. We have the Independence Day this weekend and July 5th. I went, you know, I was thinking about declaring July 5th as my own happy um Neutrality, soul independence. Um, oh gosh, what was the word I was looking for? Um, I don't know. Happy Soul Integrity Day on July 5th of being a um, just a soul individual who is not under the influence of all of the wild stuff that goes on in our realities. So thank you guys for all being in the heart space and for 
doing the work, the transformational work for yourself um, so that we can affect this entire universe with that. All right, take care.